let's let's talk about the Beachcar stuff. This is this is really exciting stuff. This is a channel that you've you've recently uh, created. Um, wh- why? What drew you to that? What was the the thing that? Uh, pr- so the you interesting to do thing that? is, as a consultant, um, as a consultant, I don't get to develop anymore. I don't. I'm not writing code. I'm no. not doing all these awesome things that I really enjoy doing as a yeah. developer. Um, and because of that, I'm not learning anymore, or at least not learning at the pace that I would uh, that I am accustomed to. Right. I I really enjoy the thing that I learn about developing is there is always a new problem to solve. There's always something new to learn. There's always some new technology to help you do things better. Mm -hmm. And I was getting into a situation where customers were asking me, hey, have you tried this? And have you tried this? And I'm saying, no, I haven't tried that. (laughs) No, I haven't heard of that. Um, And so I was, it was really, uh, I I could see where it was really going to hurt me consulting wise if I didn't catch back up. Mm. Right. Mm. So, so I started doing that and and as I was doing that, I was I was going through some documentation. I was I was working most recently. I've been working a lot with Doctor and ORM. Mm-hmm. I haven't used Doctor and ORM a lot, mm-hmm. um, uh, it, but I've been telling people they should use it. <laughs> <laughs> and so I thought, okay, well, let me learn that. Let me pick up on on DDD because I haven't been doing domain driven design a lot. So mm-hmm. let me let me start reading the books and learning that and using Doctrine. Well, as I was using it, I was finding it, I was going to the website. The Do- Doctrine has a, a awesome documentation. Their mm-hmm. their website is really good. Their contributors who who contributed the documentation did a really good job. However, there are missing pieces. Mm-hmm. As with as with yeah, most as things, with there's always yeah. more than one way to do something. Yeah, I, I was doing some searching for these things. I was trying to build associations, right? Right. I, I wanted to be, I wanted to have associations. So if I wanted to query a bank, it would give me all the branches. It would give me all the people that were assigned to the branch to the bank and everything else. Um, and I wanted to get that. I wanted to do one query and give me all that information in one query and let me disseminate it to mm-hmm. a view or or as an API or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. now there are times when you don't want all that information. I just want the bank. Don't give me all the branches and all that crap. I don't need all the data. And that's that's well and good. Mm-hmm. But in my case, I wanted to get all that information. So I didn't have to iterate over the bank and do multiple queries, uh, multiple calls to the server because it just slows down. It's just not a good way to do it. No. So so with Dr. and ORM, I wanted to do that. I wanted to build these associations. Well, looking at the documentation, I wasn't finding what I exactly needed. Right. Uh, you know, I, 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 in the documentation, in some cases, they were saying, oh, well, you build this relationship, you can do it through your annotations, so then you have to, you know, you use the annotation driver, and you're able to pull all that out, and it builds all this for you. But in some places in the documentation, they didn't allude to the fact that I also needed to make sure I had a collection being created in the constructor in order to pull in these extra things, right? Yes, yes. I was searching everywhere for it. I was yeah. searching, I was on Stack Overflow, I was on websites, I was out on uh, uh, SymphonyCast, they have some yeah. awesome videos on Doctrine, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wasn't finding what I needed because everybody was doing it a different way. Yes, and and yes. but but I couldn't take I couldn't take an example from one place and use it with an example from another place, which actually is what I needed. But mm. I how do I join these together? Nobody's doing them. Yeah. So I said, okay, I, I I what if I created videos and put this information out there and created some podcasts? And what if I updated the you know my I could do blog posts? What if I updated the documentation to also include this? And of course, everybody's like, yeah, 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 do all that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. So that's kind of how it started. I said, you know what? Okay, so I'm I'm creating this sample application because I want to u- learn more about Zend Expressive. I mm-hmm. want to learn more about middleware. I want to be able to create microservices. I want to be able to create an API first type approach doing this, and I want to use Doctor No RM. Yes. Um, and I'll, and I want to use uh, you know uh, Ben Ramsey's UUID uh, because what if somebody wants to have their application over multiple servers, right? Mm. Then so you have to you know multiple servers. You, you know, and if they're creating uh, records from multiple servers, you can't use a auto increment <laughs> anymore. It just doesn't work well. So you use UIDs. Um, so anyway, I, I wanted to use all these things, and so I thought, okay, I'm going to do that. I'm going to create a series of videos, and and that's how Beachcast was born. It's Brilliant. going to be a series of videos creating the sample application. So I'm able to learn. I'm also uh, other people are able to look over my shoulder, so to speak, so they can see and learn themselves through the process. That's really, really awesome. And 
the, these are live streamed to Twitch, are they not? And then they're, yeah. and then they're put onto YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. So I decided, you know, if, if, if creating videos was hard, how could I make it harder? <laughs> Let me live stream it. Um, no, I, I, so a friend of mine, uh, well, uh, Christopher Pitt in Australia and Bo Simonson with Astrocast, um, mm. they, they do a lot of streaming to Twitch, um, mm. and some great content, uh, great content, good stuff. And of course, gamers all over the world are using Twitch. Yes. Uh, so I thought, okay, well, let me, I, I my original intent was, let me go ahead and do this experimenting. Let me do this development live on Twitch. Mm. Mistakes, uh, Google searches, and the whole thing, right? Mm. Um, so, so as I started getting ready to do that, uh, I recorded the first episode, and I'm like, okay, that went pretty well. It wasn't too bad. Um, I did do a little bit more preparation, so it wasn't too raw, mm. uh, but it was raw. Mm. Uh, I did, I did stumble. I did make some mistakes. I, you know, I forgot to to put something in the code, and it didn't work the way I thought it was going to. But anyway, so yeah, I started doing it on Twitch, and then I thought, uh, well. On Twitch, you can then trim the video, the beginning and the front, so yeah. that only the usable content is what you want. So you don't end up with a countdown on the beginning for eight minutes, right? You can you can strip that off. Yes. Um, and then once I have that, once I have you know the the trimmed uh, uh, video down, then I can push that to YouTube. Yes. And on YouTube, on YouTube, although you can't really do a lot of video editing, but you can take out some of the little pauses mm. and and things such as that. Uh, and and then I also started creating thumbnails to put on to the beginning. So as people were searching for it, they see the video. They don't see me. Uh, you know, yes. they, instead, they actually yeah. see something really yeah. nice and it's got some text on it. So just looking at the thumbnail, they can tell it's content that they want to see. <laughs> and so I've just been tweaking it over time and to yeah. get it to where it is now. We're on our, it's on my fifth recording. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah. four recordings actually are... Um, are building the project. One recording I did just as an intro to say, hi, I'm Adam and I'm going to do this thing and, and come check us out. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, so now all the episodes are still out on Twitch. So mm. if anybody mm. happens to find me on Twitch, it's there. Mm -hmm. um, and But then on, on it's also on YouTube for the people who find things through Google search and well, through I'll, YouTube. I'll definitely um, put the links in the show notes and, and all oh, that. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. It's, there's always yeah. this, this weird situation when you press the start streaming button and you're not too sure whether you're live or not. Yeah. So you'll kind of look, you got this really weird look on your face as to yeah. am I live or not? <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and, and so I did that. Uh, that was my first iterations, right? And as I'm going through that, then I'm looking at it, even on YouTube, it had this, uh, this uh, very un, unsure beginning. Yes. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad I could trim that. Uh, so I did trim that off and, and somebody in my, in my second, uh, my second recording, Mm. Um, a friend of mine reached out and he said, you know what, you should have get some sort of little intro to, to the beginning of that. Um, and so I started doing some researching. I started looking at other YouTubers. And I was like, what did you do? What did you do? And a lot of them went out to Fiverr, uh, F-I-V-V-R, mm -hmm. I think is the name. Mm -hmm. And f so for $7, I got an intro. Excellent. And, uh, it's and, very and, slick, and, by the way. I've seen it. It's very good. Thank you. Thank you. And by coincidence, the person who uh, created it, he had like, um, he had like seven or eight intros and, and he was like, $7, you know, uh, I'll build the intro. Well, then uh, he had, a, he had an intro or an introduction video of himself. Right. And one of the, w there was an intro there that kind of showed water kind of splashing over top of the logo. And I was like, can that one be included? And the next day he sent it to me. He's like, yeah, here, Excellent. it's done. And that's the intro that I'm using Excellent. because, uh, you know, Beachcast, it just makes sense to yeah. kind of have water washing over the text. Uh, of course, it's actually an ink stain washing over the text. But it, to me, it's a beach yeah, because yeah. it's Beachcast, beach right? Cast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. no, it, it worked out really well. And uh, he actually shortened it. I asked him, I said, uh, well, that's, it was 12 seconds. I'd like to get it down to nine seconds. And there's too many transitions. Can you cut out a couple of those? And yeah. and he was graciously, you know, he, he removed two of the transitions. It mm -hmm. made it shorter to where I wanted it. And uh, so there you go. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So, um, what is the schedule of this show? What is the uh, what, how many do you push out a week or month or 
whatever. So I'm, I'm aiming for one a week. One a week. Um, right. So I'm recording Wednesdays. So if somebody were inclined and want to be on Twitch live and see me doing it live, it would be Wednesdays at, uh, at 4 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. Eastern time. Yeah. Uh, that's, when I'm, that's when I'm recording is 4 p.m. Eastern time. And then usually it takes me about an hour to get everything out to YouTube. Uh, so then, you know, roughly... Well, so it's about a 25 to 30 minute recording mm -hmm. and then another hour to get it out to YouTube. So by mm -hmm. 6 p.m. it's on YouTube. Um, and um, so that's the plan. That's that's the way it's been going and working so far is I'm recording at 4 p.m. Done around 4.30 p.m. And then about uh, 5.30 p.m. I'm, I'm pushing it out to YouTube and, and get it going there. That's a, that's a, that's a good sort of uh, schedule to have. And uh, if, yep. you can, if you can keep that, that'll be awesome. That'll be, that'll be very well, I've good. Well, I've, I've got reminders in my calendar yeah. and everything else. Uh, so it reminds me the day before and it reminds me the morning of uh, <laughs> because I, I do much better on a schedule. If I'm not on a schedule, chances are I'm not going to get it done. Uh, so I, I did that. And then I started putting myself on a schedule as well with the podcast, uh, Run Geek Radio. Yes. Uh, because I, I found that if I don't put myself on a schedule for that, I'm not going to do it either. <laughs> uh, so the idea, of course, for Run Geek Radio is I want to I want to do at least one episode a month, right. um, maybe more, but uh, but one a month is 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 what I'm aiming for. And where do you see Beachcasts and Run Geek Audio? Where do you radio? Do you, where do you see the the themes sort of interlinking or? I mean, is there is there a distinct difference between the two in terms of the content that you wish to push out? There is. Uh, so, so my idea behind Run Geek Radio, of course, is I talk for a few minutes about running because I do a lot of running. I'm an ultra runner, so I mm. do a fair amount of running. So I talk about something related to running, whether it's you know changing my shoes or or some run that I might be running in, like in November I ran in a New York marathon, things like that. Mm. And I talk about something running, just small, right? And, and, and then the rest of the time, I mean, it's usually, it's usually a 15 to 20 minute podcast. Uh, so, so usually it's three, maybe four minutes dedicated to something running related. And then the rest of it, I'm talking about uh, tech related stuff, or mm -hmm. it's more soft skills. Right. It's more about, it's more about uh, working together in teams, uh, teaching, mentoring, uh, contributing to the community, uh, maybe some other things that I see, right? Mm -hmm. It's not uh, it's not so much technical. Mm -hmm. um, although I might talk, I, I, you know, at times I might talk about some package in, in uh, some rough usage of it. It's not really meant to be technical. Mm -hmm. So my idea is BeachCast is going to be code. It's going to be code. It's going to be in the mix. It's going to be doing programming, learning some new technology. Like one of the videos in the past was creating Docker containers using Docker Compose. And what does the Docker Compose look like? And what does the what does the Docker file look like mm -hmm. to create the, the images and everything else? Mm -hmm. um, and then another video I did on, on BeachCast was using PHP Storm and how do I set up my environment? How do I connect it to MySQL? How do I connect it to Docker? How do I connect it to PHP Unit? Mm -hmm. Whereas with uh, RunGeek Radio, it is more along the lines of, okay, how do I work together as a team? How do I not step on other people? How do I not allow other people to step on me? Um, you know, it's so it's a lot more soft skills, which is infinitely as important as development itself. Uh, but I think it's something that a lot of people don't focus on. Definitely. So, yeah, my my favorite closing statement of of Run Geek Radio is be good to yourself and others because that is what it's all about. If you're if you're not able to live up to that, you're not going to be happy developing, no matter how many problems you're solving and no matter how much you know. Yeah, that's a that's a good thing to end on with uh, yeah. with that statement. Yeah, so you're working on uh, doctrine and. You mentioned PHP Storm. Is is there? What's your schedule looking like in the next, in the next few uh, few episodes on Beachcast? Yeah, so, so now we've we've created the project. We've got uh, we've got Zend Expressive installed. We've got uh, we've got doc, a Docker all set up. So now we've got a Docker container for the MySQL database and a separate Docker container for mm. our instance of PHP and Apache. Mm. Um, and we're using we're using the images, the official images from MySQL and the official images from uh, from the PHP uh, to to do that. 
Um, and then we came back and we set up uh, PHP Storm. Um, then we created modules in Zend Expressive because I like making applications modular. I like mm -hmm. being able to separate the logic out in different modules. And then the latest episode was installing Doctrine. So now we've right. got Doctrine installed. We've got the configurations created. We've got it working command line. Mm -hmm. uh, so we could use the command line tools. Mm -hmm. uh, that's often the thing that people have difficulties with is, you know, you can get, sure, you can uh, you can use Composer and install Doctrine ORM, but then fire up a, a CLI and see if you can get it rendering and usually it, it fails. Um, so so I think that'll be really helpful. Uh, I, hope, I hope a lot of people are able to use that and get their CLI up and running because it, it is helpful to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, not to mention the CLI for Zend Expressive for mm -hmm. creating modules and creating middlewares and all that. You can do all that in CLI as well. That was uh, we we got that up and running. So, so one of my next episodes, or actually the next episode, is going to be now that we've got Doctrine up and running, mm -hmm. we're going to connect it up to the database and we're going to create an entity. And through that entity, then we're going to, um, in the module that we've already created, we're going to start start querying the database and be able to output the results. Uh, we're building an API. So the sample right. application okay. is an API. So okay. the output is not view. It is not HTML. It is JSON. Okay. And yeah. So, uh, so the idea is that the, in the next one, then we'll be able to, you know, query the database for all the results of a given table, um, output that as JSON, uh, and then we can create pagination as well with it. So, um, I don't know how much I'm going to get done in the next episode. I think creating the entity, there's no relationships in the entity that I'm going to be creating this time. So I'm thinking I could probably put t pagination in there. So I'll probably create an entity. And and create the read or the crud. I could create most of the crud. I think. Yeah. I, I'll yeah. probably create some of that crud ahead of time, mm -hmm. but then uh, kind of cover it in the video and say, okay, here's what I did and here's how I constructed that. Um, so I think I'll probably create the crud ahead of time just to keep the videos uh, mm -hmm. flowing, and then um, and then yeah. So and and then in the future ones, of course, then we'll create additional modules and we'll start using some associations. Excellent. You know, so Excellent. Uh, and and so each each video will have my my goal is to make each video about twenty to twenty five minutes. Right. Uh, okay. So so I'll do what can be done in twenty to twenty five minutes to help you move forward with the project. Mm -hmm. And I, I funny enough, I, I say funny, but uh, but I'm actually I'm actually very honored by this. I've actually had a couple people who have been watching the videos who actually emailed me and said, by the way, I was following a lot in your example and I'm getting this error. Right. So they're so they're actually doing yeah. the application with me through the videos, which is amazing. Yes, it's uh, that that part of the community the driven aspect of that is 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 just so mind-blowing i find and you're doing this live which is well into the deep end <laughs> yes yeah i mean the the best thing about going live though is that you do show all of the mistakes warts and all because you have to you can't edit yes. that, that out and right. there are some some things that i've done i've worked for different publication companies where it has to be as clean as possible, like a clean right. as a whistle. So, and, and there's a there is a big demand to show mistakes because you are showing how you solve those mistakes. Do, you, do yeah. how, how do you go about doing that? Do you do because you, you often, obviously have to keep the audience engaged as you're yes. trying to solve the problem? Do you have any? tips on on how to do that from my perspective <laughs> yeah yeah so so for um the key to the key to recovery is mm. communication yeah. right um your people are not going to be bored if you're talking your way through it Mm. Um, I've, I've recently been watching some videos, uh, because I, because it's a, a, an interest to me watching videos, uh, more and more companies are starting to do interactive interviewing, right? Right. right. Yeah. Where they're interviewing candidates and through the process of the interview, they're having them solve problems yeah. and solve coding problems. Yeah. And, and now they're not looking to see, did you successfully solve the problem? I mean, all that, that, that's a part of it, but that's not the big key of it. The key of it is, is they want to see, okay, can you communicate while you're doing this? Mm -hmm. Can you talk, can you talk your way through a problem? Can you talk your way, uh, through the debugging process? Um, 
And can you talk afterwards and, and come to a conclusion of how to make something better, yeah. right? Uh, so that's really interesting to me. I, and it's and this is a challenge, yeah. uh, but but it's something that I incorporated into these videos mm -hmm. is as I'm going through, um, there's, a, there's a couple sites out there, uh, uh, Interview Cake and Brilliant. Are, are two different sites mm. that, that they have problems on a regular basis that you can practice and, right. and do these things. And I've been playing with them only because they're fun. Yes. It's, it's really practicing data structures, practicing algorithms and things like these. And yes. I even have a whiteboard here set up in the side of my office and I whiteboard it. I don't, I don't do the coding in Notepad. I don't do the coding in PHP Storm. I do the coding on the whiteboard as I'm solving these <laughs> problems. And and now that, that's a bit of that that that's a bit of torture, but but at the same time I've learned a lot through it. Yeah. Because yeah. because doing it that way it's not I don't have I'm not worried about the tabs I'm not worried about the spaces I'm not worried about the curly braces on the right line I'm worried about can can I can my mind think through doing that. Mm. Um, mm. And I have another story I'll share in just a moment. But but anyway, so uh, so I find that when I'm when I'm doing the videos and I'm I run into a, a blocker, I kind of talk as I'm going. Oh, what mm. went wrong there? Well, let me look at the error. Oh, okay. And in mm. one of the videos, I did. It was an error, mm. and uh, it ended up being because I w I practiced ahead of time and I left a line of code in there. <laughs> um, I left a use statement, or I, actually I. I removed the use statement to pull in a, a third-party library, but I had this—I had the code in there that was still trying to use it, yeah. and uh, but I, so I found it pretty quickly. Yeah. But uh, but I talked through that. I talked through it as I did it, and I found it really quick uh, through the talking. But mm. that takes practice. It does. It does. It, it does. Yeah. Definitely. Um, it, I remember when I first did some live <laughs> streams, live coding streams, and I would. I, it would take a long time before actually pressing the start button because yeah. I was running through so many things in my head, making sure everything was, uh, was in place, not only the streaming software, but, but also making sure the IDEs were in the right place, the windows were yeah. viewing. And in some cases I even did the whole thing offline before right. I actually went live and Normally, it didn't even go the way I wanted it to go. Or you go into a di completely different direction. Um, yeah. I did a I did a series um, a, a few years back called Coffee and Code, with where the intention was to have a coffee and write some code, and yet the the actual episode turned into a good few hours worth of oh, footage yeah. because because you end up just falling down a rabbit hole. When do you when do you go right? This is this is the cutoff point. This is where I'm going to stop today. Do you have a Do you give yourself a time limit? Is there a, is there anything like that? So I've I've uh, so far I've been able to look at it and pretty much guesstimate. Okay, this is about 20 25 minutes in. Mm. Um, as long as I'm not running into any problems, and and I've been able to guesstimate. I don't. Right. I haven't gotten far enough yet to really know or to to really go down any rabbit hole. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, now, now that being said, with this application, I am kind of doing it ahead of time, so it's mm. not it's not true, it's not true blind investigation mm. in this case. Uh, in the future, it might be mm. uh, for some other projects and things. Uh, Bo Simonson does that. I mean, he's uh, when when he does Astrocast, he is truly going down rabbit holes on the video and and solving these problems, and. Um, and it's kind of refreshing to see him do it. So, so his recordings are an hour, but mm -hmm. he's got maybe fifteen minutes, maybe twenty minutes of content, yes. right? And and that's because he's going down a rabbit hole. He's thinking through logically how will this work, and and there's there's definitely benefit to that. But mm -hmm. it is it is a longer recording. It's not like uh, you know. I, I can't, uh, it would be difficult for somebody to search for a way of doing something and then, uh, well, here's a one hour episode, uh, it, some three minute snippet in there is how to do it. Yeah. Um, but that being said, I think it is a great learning tool. I've, I've really enjoyed the, the episodes that I've been present at because I'll, I'll log in on Twitch and watch and, 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 and type to him, uh, type messages to him while he's doing it. Um, and, uh, you know, there is value to it. I enjoy yeah. it. It is pair yeah. programming, uh, at, it, it at its, uh, at its root. And it's yeah. really amazing. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. now that being said, uh, I'm not a fast programmer by any means. I, I mean, that being said, when I get into a groove, um, mm -hmm. I can, I can program quite a bit in a day, mm -hmm. but I'm not a fast programmer. 
when I'm program when I'm pair programming with other people, they're running circles around me and they're like, okay, Adam, just get out of my way. Let me do it. <laughs> and I'm like, please, you know, just go ahead, type. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the keyboard's yours. Uh, but that being said, I find that talking out loud uh, and practicing that helps me. Uh, because it uh, it does it does help me to be able to do things a little bit faster when it does come time to to do uh, your real pair programming, which I enjoy doing. Hey, that's a really good point because I'm a remote developer and I find myself just talking to the yep. wall, to the cat, to to anything that will listen <laughs> yep. about the situation yep. that I'm in, and I find that going through the code in my head. And speaking it out loud is actually really, really useful, really helpful. And yep. it's almost like you're, you're not having a discussion with yourself, but you are just listing the things that you want to achieve and how to get there in terms of the code. Yep. You've gone through. You're rubber ducking. Yes, yes. You've gone yeah. through this this line of code. You're, in, you're now in this loop. At this point, this happens. You're calling that method. Yes. So you're kind of breaking it down into a nice linear sort of thing yep. but uh, and, and I find that it helps the person you're pair programming with when you are with somebody yes. because through through your rambling through your talking as long as you're doing it um, you know they might pick up on something yes. you know they'll it, it's rubber ducking for them mentally as well yes uh, because they'll be like oh well, wait a minute what did you just say uh, that's the problem that's it you yes. know yes. and it, it highlights it so yeah. that's a good thing yeah 